What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm in a weird mood, so just deal with it, okay? Okay. So this is going to be a very different video for me. We're just gonna try something new, see if you guys like it, see if I like it. But one of my favorite shows, I'm not ashamed slash kind of ashamed to admit this, but The Bachelorette has started. I'm so excited. I think the reason why I love it so much is watching it with my friends and kind of talking about relationships and watching relationships unfold on television. It's very easy to get sucked in and become critical and judgmental and forget that these are real people, but all of that aside, I'm going to try to do a bachelorette reaction video for you guys. I'm not even sure how this video is going to go down. We're just going to roll with it. I'll make it work. Basically, what I did was take a lot of notes during the episode to share with you guys just my thoughts and reactions and also comments from my friends. What we think about this season, who my front runners are. I'm actually in a bachelorette fantasy league. I know that was a little extreme, but it's the first year to do that. We just thought it would be fun. The first person out of the limo, well, besides JoJo. JoJo is the bachelorette. Here's her picture. She's super fun. She's from Dallas. I like her. So the first person out of the limo is Jordan. Jordan Rogers, AKA Aaron Rogers' little brother. Don't know who Aaron Rogers is? He's the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Naturally, Jordan is going to be my favorite. After reading all of the bios, I knew he was going to be a front runner for me personally and also I had a feeling that he might be a front runner with Jojo. Don't know why, he just seems like her type. Not that I really know her type, I'm just speculating. That's the whole point of the show for us viewers. <laughs> it's just speculating for my own opinions and judge. Just kidding. But I thought it was really sweet what he told her. He said something about how his parents met and were engaged within a few months and then they've been married for 30 something years, which I thought was really sweet encouragement just for her to trust the process and to know that it can happen and it can be successful. So way to go, Jordan, already getting more points in my book. Next out of the limo was Derek and I'm gonna put pictures of them over here just so you can see. Derek had some really sweet things to say to her and then he also ended up calling her sexy in a roundabout way, which I thought was kind of interesting, but she seemed to kind of kind of be into him a little bit. Next out of the limo is Grant and I wrote down what he said because it was really funny. He said something like, Jojo, I'm not gonna fall in I'm not gonna do what Ben did. I'm not gonna fall in love with two girls. I'm only gonna fall in love with you. And I was kind of like, mm, yeah, that's kind of your only option. <laughs> you know, you're on The Bachelorette. Like, who else are you gonna fall in love with? One of the guys? Like, I don't know. It was really funny. Like, he kind of tried, but then it was like, mm. Next was James F. And literally all I wrote was snooze. Next up is Robbie, and he brought a bottle of wine to share with Jojo, which immediately I was like, he knows their family so well. Because if you watched last season, the entire hometown date of hers was like her family just boozing, drinking wine, and mom drinking out of the bottle, which they ended up drinking just straight from the bottle. And then Jojo says, my mom's gonna like him. Next out of the limo was Alex. He is a Marine and I think he's like 5'7", which is kind of on the shorter side, but also his pants were a little short. Next out of the limo was Will and I was laughing so hard because at first I was like, oh no, he's just really clumsy because he had these cards and he like, they fell out of his hands and he like picks them up, but it actually ended up being part of his gimmick, which was like really funny. And he basically had like cue cards like written because he was like, oh, I'm nervous. So I like wrote down what I wanted to say. And basically they were like out of order. And he ended up saying that like, he's the most beautiful woman ever. <laughs> it meant it for her. Uh, it was funny. I just thought it was like really cute and weird. And I would have been like, oh, that's 
so funny. I would have enjoyed it if I was JoJo. I don't think she was really feeling it. Okay, next is Chad. And after reading all of the bios before the season started, I was like, this guy is going to be a D-bag. Like, ooh, because for three of his questions on his bio, he said, myself in 10 years, all right, all right, all right. Which I'm like, like, what is that? Like, little cringe vom. Anyways, they had some like awkward sexual tension whenever they had their little meeting out of the limo. He like comes up and like grabs her hands and he's like really close to her and just doesn't want to let go. And I feel like he's like trying too hard to like be sexy and, and <laughs> this next one, oh my gosh, so freaking funny. His name is Daniel. So of course he walks out of the limo and says, damn, Jojo, back at it again with the next bachelorette, which doesn't really even like make sense. But you know, he's playing off the like, damn Daniel meme. Anyways, I thought it was funny, but also, I also wrote down that he already seems wasted, <laughs> which is funny because the rest of the episode just gets, just gets worse. It's usually what happens on the first episode. It's just a drunken slop fest and I just always feel like they should have a two drink maximum, keep it classy, let's not get schwasty. Next out of the limo is Ali and he's like from, he's Iranian. So I'm like, well, he's basically Aladdin because his name's Ali, Prince Ali. And yeah, I just feel like he looks like he could be Aladdin, but he was like so nervous, but like in a really endearing way. And oh, he was just like swooning over Jojo and it was like precious. Okay, next is James Taylor, which funny, there's three James on this season. And so he gets to be called James Taylor because he's a singer songwriter, so naturally. And of course he comes out of the limo playing a song that he wrote for Jojo. And I'm just like, duh, like, of course you are. Also, he's very Southern, and I felt like her Southern came out like in her voice whenever she started talking to him, which was really funny. Next is Jonathan. Oh, God bless you, Jonathan. So he comes out wearing a kilt, and he proceeds to tell her, I'm half Chinese, I'm half Scottish, but luckily I'm half Scottish on the bottom. Awkward. And then to just drive it even further, he whispers in her ear after they embrace and says, I'm not wearing any panties. I sure hope you're not. I hope you're wearing boxers or something. Like, ugh, ugh, just, it was bad. It was cringe. Go watch it if you really want to. So Jonathan enters the house. All of the guys kind of start, like, judging him and, you know, just interpreting the scenario. And... Daniel in his like interview package says it'd be like me like taking my shirt off and being like look at my body which is hilarious like he thinks it's like a like a show off thing like no like keep it classy <laughs> but then later in the episode Daniel proceeds to do exactly that is take off his clothes and basically be like look at my body so I just loved the irony of that you know Next out of the limo is Santa Claus. <laughs> Wait, what? So this guy named Nick cleverly says, I will be Saint Nick when I come out of this limo. I'm gonna dress up like Santa Claus. I'm gonna roll out saying, Jo, 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 Jo. Cause her name's Jojo and it's like, ho, 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 like Santa and my name's Nick. So it's like Saint Nick, you know, you get it? Ha, <laughs> so gimmicky, but also kind of clever. I don't know. Next is Chase, and I didn't really remember much, but he was wearing glasses with a mustache and then makes some cheesy, like, mustache puns, and I was just like, no, why? Like, just, it's not funny. So then there's a cut to an interview package with Robbie, and he makes a really funny analysis that I just felt like was so spot on. He says, there are two types of guys here. There are those that are well-dressed and successful, and just put together and then there are guys that use gimmicks when they come out of the limo and I was just like dang Robbie you nailed it uh so Sal comes out of the limo and he has two 
blue bowls. Like, and he hands them to her and is like, you know, if you're nervous, I give you permission to squeeze my balls and Ugh, just like, why? Like, what made you think that that was an appropriate joke to make the first time meeting a girl that you could potentially marry? Like, ugh, that's just, that would put me off so much that I would like not even like give them the time of day. Next is Coley, he's in real estate, makes some joke about taking her off the market because, you know, houses and the market. Um, next out of the limo is Brandon. I'm pretty sure his occupation is like hipster or something, which, how do you make money doing that? I'm not sure. But anyways, he rolls up and he's like, Jojo, I don't know anything about you. That's such a freaking hipster thing to say, is I don't know anything about you. <laughs> uh, Brandon. So, <laughs> Chase makes a funny comment in an interview package and he says, there's a lot of hair gel, a lot of cologne. I feel like I'm in some kind of catalog. <laughs> Chase, that was a winner. That was funny. Next out of the limo is James S. He's wearing a fine blue suit, might I say. And his occupation, bachelor's super fan. Oh, producers, you're so funny and these occupations that you just create based off of these people. Next is Nick S. He, like, does the splits and then tries to dance with her. It was just kind of, why? It was just weird. And Vinny comes out next and he's like, you know, I wanted to make, I wanted to bring some champagne, but I couldn't find any, but I still prepared a toast. And then he pulls out an actual piece of toast. Gimmicks. Speaking of gimmicks, Peter rolls out of the limo with a giant heart pillow and says, I want to be your man crush Monday. <laughs> Evan comes out of the limo next. His occupation is erectile dysfunction expert. Um, and he says, oh my God, bless America, <laughs> Jojo. <laughs> and he called her girly, which I was like, cringe, don't call me girly. That's like what my girlfriends call me. Wells comes out of the limo next and he's like, oh, Jojo, you're so out of my league. And we're all just like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And then he's like, well, I brought some friends. And then the band All For One comes out and they start serenading her and singing that song. What's that song that they sing? I can't remember it. I'll like insert whatever it is. Ugh, and I wrote down, oh my gosh, he's the best. Why did I not draft him? in my fantasy league. But then I kind of started to wonder cause he's a like radio, like a radio DJ. And then he has this band and then they keep showing up and I'm kind of like, are you just there to like promote your radio show? Don't know if he's there for the right reasons. So just saying. Uh, so Mr. Christian, who I did draft comes rolling in on a motorcycle and I'm like, Pitter patter. I love motorcycles. And then Luke, Mr. Luke comes riding in on a unicorn, aka a horse with a unicorn horn. And last season Jojo showed up with a unicorn mask for Ben. So it was like playing off that, but like in a cute way. And yeah, he's from Texas and they like bond over that. And I just feel like Anyone in the season that's like from Texas, like they're automatically gonna have an advantage because that's just how Texas people are. But I guess like anyone would do that, like if there's someone from their state, you know, like that's a like commonality. So of course you're gonna be like, yeah, like we're both from Wisconsin, woo. But I feel like Texans are like especially tight, you know. Did I draft Luke? I drafted Luke. I have Jordan, Christian, and Luke on my team. Squad. We're gonna get some points. Okay, so that is everyone. I'm pretty sure I may have missed a few, but those are all the notes. So then, then the episode goes on. Alex steals JoJo first. He's the short Marine. Um, he does push-ups. It's really weird. And then after he like steals her first, like goes back and like fist pumps all the guys. Like, yeah, I did it, man. I was the first person. I was like. Why? Why is that necessary? Uh, then Derek's with her and he's all nervous. 
guys are just being really awkward and just getting progressively more and more drunk. And I'm like, God help these people. Two drink limit, okay, keep it classy. Um, and so then I write down that Jordan is absolutely killing the game right now. He seems so confident. They seem really comfortable together. Hi, Maverick. Um, then there's like this moment at the end of their little conversation where they're like about to kiss and they don't. I'm like, Ugh, Jordan, go for it. I need the fantasy points. I also wrote down that I really appreciate that Jordan didn't like, by the way, Jordan used to play for the NFL. And so in his conversation with her, he kind of really downplays that. He doesn't mention that he's Aaron Rodgers' brother. He doesn't mention that he played in the NFL. He's like, yeah, I'm in like sports broadcasting now. I used to play football, but I retired. And just like keeps it very like cool and casual. And doesn't try to like boast about it, which I really appreciated. Another notable moment is Will, he bought, brought one of those like cootie catcher things, you know, from like the 90s. And so they do it and she opens it up and it's like, oh, kiss Jojo. And she's like, are you ready for that? Like, are we okay? Like, is, is this really about to, oh, please don't kiss me. And then they like have this really awkward, like, mm, uh, cringe kiss. Oh my gosh, it was so awkward. I was dying. And then Jordan interrupts and I was like, praise the Lord. So he swoops her away and they have their first kiss and I was like, yes, fantasy points. It was so cute and I was like, yes, he is clearly a front runner. <sighs> Magical moment. <laughs> so after that, they both like split ways and JoJo's like looking back and she making sure she's in the clear and she's like, his butt, his butt. I gotta start doing the squats. <laughs> <laughs> Jojo, you are freaking amazing. I just thought that was hilarious and so real. Jojo has a moment with Chad. She says, I think he's surprisingly vulnerable, which I'm like, how? I think he's just deceiving you. He's gonna be a jerk and break your heart. Don't fall for it, Jojo. Uh, so then Jojo meets with Daniel, AKA, damn, Daniel. And Jojo, he's like, so have you like, you've seen that video, right? And she's like, what? No. And he's like, well, it's what I, I based it off of my little entrance. And she's like, what? People on the internet are saying like, damn, Jojo on YouTube. And he's like, no, it's like, have you paid attention to the internet lately? Like what? So awkward because she didn't know about damn Daniel. He based his whole entrance off of it. It just totally bombed and I felt kind of bad for him, but he was also like shwasty, so didn't really feel that bad for him. It was awkward. Uh, so then like Daniel is so drunk. There's like a clip of him trying to count how many drinks he's had. He doesn't even know. I made the comment, Daniel is Lace. If you guys remember Lace from last season, she got a little too carried away the first night. This is Daniel. Then Daniel takes his clothes off and he's about to jump into the pool and Jojo's like, what are you doing? Put your clothes on. And let's just replay the comment he had earlier about judging Jonathan for wearing a kilt and him saying, that's like me taking my clothes off and being like, look at my body. You're welcome, Daniel. You did it to yourself. I wonder if there's like some kind of parallel between you remember Robbie's observation about people being well-dressed and successful and then the ones that use gimmicks? I wonder if the number of drinks also aligns with both of those, if that correlates. Be interesting to know <laughs> if the ones that use the gimmicks are drinking a bit more. Santa and Jojo have a moment. She naturally sits on his lap, a little awkward. Mm. She like takes his like beard off for like a split second, puts it back on. I'm like, does that mean she's just like not feeling it? It was weird. First impression Rose comes out and she gives it to my man Jordan. Yes, fantasy points. And then Chad is just already hating on Jordan. There's gonna be conflict there. He is totes the villain of this season. Oh, <laughs> so Rose ceremony. They're like teasing, oh, someone's gonna come back from JoJo's past. Like, who's it gonna be? And it's freaking Jake Pavelka, Jake the Snake from all those seasons ago and from Bachelor Pad, oh, he's like 
kind of horrible. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, is he gonna like show up and like come on the season and like try to like date her, but even though he's like way older than her. Uh, no, he just came to wish her luck before this journey and hope that she finds love. <laughs> Thanks, producers. Like, no one really fell for that. <laughs> so there's an interview package with Chad, and he's like, Jojo and I just keep locking eyes in this rose ceremony, so I know she's totally into me. Chad, you are Olivia. Chad, Olivia, you guys should date. <laughs> it comes down to the final rose. Chris Harrison comes out and says, Jojo, when you're ready. And then... Guess who gets the freaking last rose? Damn Daniel. And everyone's just like, oh, producer pick. Then they show the guys leaving the mansion and it is like freaking daylight outside. And then it's like, whoa, reality sits in that they've been filming all night and drinking all night. And I just, I don't think I could do that. Just like, I don't think I could stay up that late. Oh. I can't do that for love. <laughs> so then there is the preview for the rest of the season. They always make it look very dramatic. There was some blood, there's like Chad being a villain, there's people hating on Jordan and saying that he's not there for the right reasons, aka Chad's just saying that. I feel like it's gonna be a Nick versus Sean again in this season. So they always make those previews look so bad and then, you know, just suck you in to watch the rest of the season. And then it's like never exactly what it is or it is exactly what you think it is, but like worse. So uh, I am interested to see how this season goes. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Mm. <laughs> I feel like this video is a hot mess, kind of like the first episode of The Bachelorette. But if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Subscribe if you would like to see more of my videos. Most of them are like beauty, unboxing, that kind of stuff. But this is just girly and fun too, so just thought I'd try something new. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!